We got another package. I'm not dropping it this time because it's kind of heavy. I've given up on making content that doesn't involve unboxing things, so deal with it. This time, we got a huge phone trade from my friend Vital Tech. Huge shout out to him. Put a link to his channel in the description and I'll show him on screen right there. Please consider subscribing to him. He did me a huge favor by sending me these phones and I can't wait to unbox them as I honestly forgot what's in here. If you thought the last trade was big, this one is like twice the size. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get started. There we go. All right, it's finally open. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Here we have the beautiful drug package. First, we have a small box. I'm not sure what's in here, but we'll put this to the side. Here we have some packing peanuts. I can reuse these or I can pop them. We'll find out later. One more packing peanut. It's not a packing peanut. And now we have a giant 14 pound bubble mailer full of phones. And last but not least, we have the iPad 2 that I sent him in the last trade. It's really nice to finally have this iPad back, but we'll get to that last. First off, let's find out what's in this little box as I have genuinely no idea. I've completely forgotten what all he sent me, so it's time to find out. I believe in here may be some phone parts, but I can't remember. I know he told me at one point, And just as I guessed, here we have, I believe to be an iPhone 6 battery and an iPhone 6 screen. That's awesome as I have an iPhone 6 that desperately needs a screen. And here we have another flat bubble. We'll go ahead and put these to the side and we'll take a look at them later. Here we have the approximately six pound bubble mailer full of phones that I'm surprised didn't get seized because it looks like drugs. Anyways, let's go ahead and unwrap it. Go ahead and find out what he sent me. Now, as there are tons of devices in here, I'm gonna play a little guessing game and pull them out one by one. Let's just start and see what I grab. First, we have an iPhone 5 with no screen. I can't remember what this is running, but I believe it's iOS 10. Here we have another iPhone 5, and I believe this one may be running iOS 8, but I honestly can't remember. I believe that this is one of the phones that I sent him in our last trade, so it's nice to see this again. Let's see what we get next. Next, we have an iPhone 4S, I believe. Yep, that is an iPhone 4S. And this is another phone that I sent him. I got this back in April of 2021. Man, I haven't seen this in a while. That's crazy. I believe that this is running iOS 6, but I can't remember. Here we have an iPhone 3GS with no side buttons. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll remember this. I also sent him this phone. He sent me quite a few things back that I sent him. So it's nice to see this again. I'll add this to my pile of screenless iPhone 3GSs. Next we have what seems to be an iPhone 4 CDMA model. I believe that this is running iOS 6, but I honestly can't remember and we'll find out in a little bit. Next, we have this absolutely demolished and when I say demolished, I mean it. iPhone SE second generation. I have no idea what this has been through and honestly, I'm scared to know. From what I remember, this is running some version of iOS 15 and is iCloud locked. And we're just gonna hope that this logic board still works. Next, we have yet another iPhone SE second generation. This one is product red and is quite destroyed. As you can see, the screen is peeling off. The home button isn't cracked and this one actually isn't completely bent. I can't remember if this one is iCloud unlocked or not, but I believe it's running iOS 16. Next, we have an Android phone. This is some TCL phone, and I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue about it, but if I remember correctly, this is Google locked. Next, we have an iPhone 5 black, not in the best condition, let's be honest. I don't wanna know what this went through. The bottom back glass is cracked, but the top one isn't, but has some case marks but the screen is in nice condition. Now, if I remember correctly, this iPhone 5 is running iOS 7. I can't remember the version, but it has a bunch of old apps on it, such as the original Flappy Bird. This phone was never downgraded and all these apps are original. So this is one of the things that I'm really excited for. Next, we have an iPhone 5S, white and silver. This is another phone that I sent him in the last trade. I got this phone back in October, 2020 and my lot of four iPhone 5Ss and haven't seen it in quite some time. 
So it's cool to see this iPhone 5S again. I believe that it's iCloud bypassed and I'll get this thing working in the future. Here we have a white iPhone 5C, I believe an eight or 16 gigabyte model, I can't remember. I think that this one is iCloud bypassed on iOS 10 and the screen on this device is from the original trade as something that I sent him. Next we have a green iPhone 5C. This is another thing that I sent him in the last trade. He sent me quite a few things back. This phone, when I sent to him, was iCloud locked and bypassed, but he has managed to get it completely find my iPhone off since I gave it to him. And this iPhone's housing is actually the original one to my iOS 9 green iPhone 5C. Here we have another white iPhone 5S. This one, I believe, is water damaged and iCloud locked and either has a battery or board issue that causes it to take forever to charge. I think that this is something I may have sent him. I honestly don't remember as I sent him quite a few iPhone 5Cs, but this one appears to be in quite nice condition. Here is a white iPhone 5. This is another phone I sent him. When I sent him this phone, it had a different screen that was just slightly chipped and is running iOS 8.4.1. It was originally iCloud locked and bypassed, but since I gave it to him, he has also gotten this one 100% find my iPhone off. So big props to him. Here we have a Moto G something. I don't know anything about Androids and it's very rare I even show them on this channel, but this one is completely unlocked from what I remember and we'll just have to see what it is when I get to it. Here we have another Moto G something. I don't remember. This one is Google locked, but I believe I can bypass it. If I remember, I think that it works without an issue, but we're gonna find out. And here we have a white iPhone XR that I sent him in the last trade. Yet another thing he sent back. I am super excited to see this iPhone again. I haven't seen it in forever and honestly regretted sending it to him. This phone is iCloud locked on iOS 14 or 13, I can't remember, and has a broken LCD. I'll eventually find a way to get into this, as honestly I have missed just seeing this thing in my room. And last but not least, we have my iPad 2 on iOS 6. I sent him this in the last trade, and yes, it looked like this before I sent it. I stabbed it with the very knife that I used to open the box. This iPad is a 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi only model, and other than the destroyed digitizer, it has a good LCD and the digitizer is still partially usable. It's nice to see this again. I regretted sending this out. Now that we have everything unboxed, it's time to do some testing and see what's charged and see what needs charging. Let's start with the iPhone 5 series pile. First, we have the iPhone 5 on iOS 8.4.1 and it's charged. It's awesome. I'll put it to the side for it to turn on. Next, we have the supposedly water damaged iPhone 5C and we'll see if it has any charge. And it appears that this one does not. So we'll add that to the no charge pile. Next, we have the green iPhone 5C on iOS 10 with my original iOS 9 housing, and we'll see if it has any charge. Looks like it does. The iPhone 5 has turned on and is ready to be set up on iOS 8. This is not the original screen that I sent it out with, but it is a functional screen and that's all that matters. I'll set this up later. Looks like the green iPhone 5C has turned on and it looks like it is on iOS 10 and seems to be fully functioning. Here we have another white iPhone 5C, and let's just see if it has any power. Looks like this one does not. I'll charge this later. This iPhone 5S has no battery. This goes in the parts pile. Now we have the iOS 7 iPhone 5 with Flappy Bird. Let's go ahead and turn it on and just pray that it has charge, and it does. I can't wait to look at that. Here we have another iPhone 5 running iOS 8 without a screen. Let's see if this has any charge. And here we have another iPhone 5 bypassed. And as you saw how it went with the last one, there's clearly no power. We'll just add this to the charge pile. And before we continue, looks like the iPhone 5 has turned on. Slide to unlock. And I believe that this is 7.1.2, but I can't remember. Yep, I was right. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of these apps. On the first page, we have some notable ones such as Alien Blue and Duolingo. On the next page, we have the first one that caught my eye, which is Flappy Bird. We have an old flashlight app, Instagram, Kindle, and that's about it for this page. On this one, we have Spotify, Snapchat, Yahoo Sports, Netflix, and Piano Tiles, including Messenger as well. And on the last page, we have Tinder, Tumblr, Trader Joe's, Uber, WhatsApp, Wells Fargo, Vine, Venmo, 
Yelp, and Twitter. Quite a lot on that last one. I'll go through some of these other apps further on in the video, but I just can't resist playing a game of Flappy Bird. This is going to be my first time ever playing the original Flappy Bird, so let's just see how it goes. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at Flappy Bird, let's be honest. But I'll definitely be playing a lot of this in the near future. I have always wanted a phone that has the original Flappy Bird installed and not pirated. So this is really cool to have. Now we have the two iPhone SEs. I don't think either of these have power. So we'll just put these in the parts. Next we have the iPhone 3GS, which you guessed it. Yeah, probably not going to charge. Here we have the iPhone 4 CDMA that now that I think about it is probably running iOS 7. So let's go ahead and see if it has any power. And it does. We'll set this to the side. And for the iPhone 4S running iOS 6, looks like it does too. I was wrong. This phone is not on iOS 6. Now that I think about it, this one is on iOS 8. It looks very similar to one that I sent him with a very similar scratch as it may actually be the original backplate that he swapped, but I can't remember. But as you can see, this is running iOS 8. And this is just a CDMA iPhone 4 running iOS 7. Next, let's have a look at the XR, and let's just see if it still turns on. Looks like I'm not getting anything. Here we have the first Google Lock Droid, and it looks like it has power. You can't kill these things. Let's just go ahead and turn them all on at once. So here we have another one. I can't remember about this one. And we get the exact same startup screen. Hello, Moto. Those two have turned on very abruptly. That was scary. Now we have the TCL phone. I don't know anything about this and have only heard of this brand once or twice. This feels like probably the cheapest Android phone I've ever touched in my life. Well, I can tell right off the bat, this is a Moto G4 and that may be a Moto G5. I have no idea. And last but not least, we have the iPad. It's gonna be a miracle if this turns on and it looks like it is. Five minutes later. And here it is. I haven't seen this in quite some time. Wow. And it is still jailbroken, just like I left it. That's really cool to see again. This is going to be staying with me for quite some time. Just like I remember, this is a 16 gigabyte running 6.1.3. And of course, it's downgraded. All right. I finally got everything out and sorted into charged and not charged files. So let's just get started with setting up the ones that are reset. This iPhone 5 is already set up and has Flappy Bird. This is not getting reset, ever. So we'll start with this green iPhone 5C. It's on iOS 10, so this should be fairly quick. English, United States. Give me a moment to connect to Wi-Fi. All right, give it a moment to activate, and it should go through with no issues. No SIM card, and now it's activated. We'll enable location services, skip the passcode, new iPhone, not gonna use an Apple ID, and welcome to iPhone. That's nice, I haven't seen an iPhone 5C running iOS 10 in a little while. Great, that's one phone set up, quite a few to go. Next, we have the iOS 8.4.1 iPhone 5 with a fairly cracked screen. English, United States, Wi-Fi. Now we give the phone just a moment to activate and then we can, conf and then we can finish the setup. We'll disable location services as on iOS 8, enabling location services causes some pretty extreme lag due to a baseband issue. We'll set up as a new iPhone. We'll skip the Apple ID, agree, and I can set up a passcode another time. Let's use Siri and welcome to iPhone. Man, I forgot how beautiful iOS 8.4 is. Now we have the CDMA iPhone 4 running iOS 7. This is gonna be a slow one. English, United States, Give it just a moment to activate. We'll enable location services and we'll set up as a new iPhone. I don't need an Apple ID. Agree, no passcode, and welcome to iPhone. There we go. That is a CDMA iPhone 4 running iOS 7. And that was a great example of the iOS 7 lag. I hate iOS 7. Finally, for the iPhones, we have a 16 gigabyte iPhone 4S running iOS 8, I believe 8.2 English no SIM card, United States, give it a sec to activate, try again. Old iPhones love to do this. Disable location services because of 
the iOS 8 bug, set up as a new iPhone, I don't need an Apple ID, agree, and no passcode. Let's use Siri and we can get started. And there we go, iOS 8 on an iPhone 4S. I've never owned an iOS 8 iPhone 4S, so this is nice to have. 16 gigabyte on 8.1.2, earlier than I thought. Next up, we have the Androids, and we'll start with the cheap brick Android. This may be the cheapest phone I've ever held. I didn't think that this was possible. I don't use Android, so this is gonna be painful. I don't have a SIM card, and I'll go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. Let's just pray that this doesn't take six hours. While we're waiting for that one, as if I remember correctly, Android is pretty slow with the setup. We'll move on to the other unlocked Android, and this would be the Moto G5, I believe. I'm honestly not sure about the model, but we'll find out in a few. Let's get started, and I'll connect to Wi-Fi, and we'll wait for it to check for updates. We're gonna set it up as new, and we'll skip the Google sign-in. Add my name, and I, and let's just go ahead and test out the fingerprint sensor, and we'll do a pattern. I don't know what this is, I'm not reading it. We'll just do a simple pattern. It's pretty obvious that I don't use Android, and we can test out this fingerprint sensor. This is actually quite quick, and not a bad user interface. Looks like my fingerprint was added. We'll test that out once the phone is set up. We'll agree to all the Google services, and it looks like we're done. Accept, we'll agree, and we're finally into the phone. Nice, I'll take a look at this in just a moment. Let's set up the other one. Here is the TCL phone, we'll go ahead and continue, but I don't want to copy any data. We'll skip signing into Google, and we'll agree to the Google services. I don't need to set up a pin, and I don't really care about Android's face ID. We'll accept track phone wirelesses. What the hell? We'll accept the track phone wireless terms and conditions, accept the TCL terms and conditions, and it looks like that was a quick setup. Here we are in the phone. Now let's go ahead and check what versions of Android these devices are running, and it looks like my fingerprint worked. I can use the pattern, or my fingerprint, which seems to actually work. We'll open the settings. We'll open the settings on each of these devices, navigate to the system section. And if we open the about phone section, we can see that this device is running Android 11 and this one is running Android 8.1.0. I don't know much about Androids, as y'all know, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with these. Now this Moto G4 on the other hand, is Google locked, so we're not gonna be able to set it up. I'll just show it. We'll accept the Motorola terms and service. And as you can see, this phone is Google locked. I believe that I can bypass this later in this video. Whew. Now that we have all the charge phones set up, it's time, it's time to plug in all of the other devices, charge them up, and I will get back to you guys tomorrow once they're all charged. Okay, um, that was two weeks ago. I don't know how it's been two weeks, but it happened. That's my bad. Anyway, I have now charged up the devices, well, the ones that would charge, and I definitely didn't leave them charging for two weeks. I've separated them into three piles, one for the devices that I was unable to charge and test, one for the devices that are too damaged to test, and one pile for the devices that I was able to charge up. So let's go ahead and just review what I couldn't test. First, very clearly, you could probably guess why I couldn't test this. It is the iPhone 3GS with no screen. I'll test this later. Next, we have my white iPhone 5S that I got back, but this has no battery, so I'll have to test it later. Next, we have the black iPhone 5 that I also got back. This one I will have to test later as it clearly doesn't have a screen. And here's the other iPhone 5 with no screen that I will also have to test later. Next, in the middle, we have the two iPhone SE 2s that I received in the trade. The red one has very clearly a screen that you could probably guess does not work. And I wonder if you could guess the fate of the black one. It's the exact same. The screen just doesn't work. So these two will need to be tested later. And finally, the three that I was actually able to charge up. One, we have this iPhone 5C. 
with a broken LCD and damaged touchscreen running iOS 10.3.3, as you can see right there. Next, we have this other white iPhone 5C that I will say is in really nice condition. This one simply has a water damaged screen and is an eight gigabyte running iOS 10.3.3. This one works perfectly fine and the screen is still fully functioning. Next, we have my iPhone XR that I received back in the trade. As you could probably guess, the screen is non-functional, except it does light up, so I decided to fully charge it. It is on the setup screen of iOS 14, but I can't remember the exact version. But when I lock it, you can hear the sound. Let's try that again. Unlock it and lock it. There you go. You can see that it is on the setup screen. Unfortunately, this one is activation locked, but I have just bought an iPhone XR that I will have coming soon. So stay tuned for a video about that as I may be switching the parts into this white housing. So what's next? Well, a lot of these devices have such simple things that I would most likely want to do them off camera as it honestly wouldn't be very entertaining to watch. But one thing that I think would be entertaining is bypassing the Google lock on this Moto G4. So let's get that done. Okay, so after about 15 or 20 minutes of messing around and figuring out how to do this, I figured out exactly how to get past the Google lock on this Moto G4. So this is not a tutorial, but if you'd like to, you can follow along with me, but I'm not gonna be giving any detail. We'll start by going to vision settings, going to talkback and enabling talkback, get into the settings menu. Then we need to disable talkback by holding the two volume buttons. Now that it's disabled, we can open text-to-speech settings and then slide back across the top of the menu bar. We'll open the settings home, we'll scroll down and we'll go to apps and we will go down and find the Google app. Now we need to go to notifications, go to settings and click on show cards. No thanks. And then we wanna open Chrome. Now that we have Chrome open, you'll want to go to this specific website. I have already done the things on this website I need to do, so I'm not gonna show how to do that, but I'll show you the files that I downloaded. You'll go to this website, you'll go here, and you'll download two specific files. One, this apexlauncher.apk file, and this frptools8.1.apk file. I have already done that in advance to speed up the process, so I don't need to do that. We'll go back to the Google settings, and this time we want to search for downloads. First, we'll install the frptools.apk file, go to settings, and now I'll need to allow installation of apps from unknown sources. We'll go back and we'll try again to install this APK file. We'll click on install and we'll wait for this one to install. We'll click accept. Now the app is installed. We'll click done and then we'll install the apexlauncher.apk file. Now the app's installed, we can click open, and here we are in the menu of the Moto G4. Now, just because I'm at the menu doesn't mean I'm done. Now, we need to go to settings, go to apps, and we need to scroll down until we find Google Play services. Now, we need to go to storage, clear cache, and clear all data. Now we need to disable Google Play services and now go to the Google Play Store and disable it as well. Now we need to show system applications and find the Google Account Manager. We can go here and now disable this. Here we are. Now we are in the phone. This is now a fully functioning and unlocked Moto G4. I can now add my Google account and do whatever I want with this phone. It is no longer locked to the previous owner's account. All right, so here we are. In total, in this second gigantic phone trade that I've done with Vital Tech. Again, huge shout out to him. I'll put a link to his channel up in the corner and a link down in the description. But in total, I received two Android phones that are fully unlocked. One that was Google locked, but I bypassed. Three iCloud bypassed iPhone 5Cs my iPhone 5S back, which is also iCloud Bypass, two iCloud Bypass iPhone 5s on iOS 10, one on iOS 8, one on iOS 7 with a bunch of rare apps such as Flappy Bird, etc., an iPhone 4 CDMA running iOS 7, an iPhone 4S running iOS 8.2, my iPhone 3GS back, my iPhone XR back, and 
even my iPad 2 back underneath all these phones. That is a lot. I noticed while editing this video that I completely forgot to mention in the outro, the red iPhone SE second generation, the black iPhone SE second generation, the iPhone 6 screen, and the iPhone 6 battery that he sent me. So I decided to make this extra clip just to mention those as I cannot forget about these SEs. So that's just about it for this video. I don't have much more to do in this video, but I have quite a few more videos planned regarding a lot of these devices that I have received. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed. So thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, peace out guys.